Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode three of P2 India Mutual Fund Presents Live Mint, Amend, Adjust, and Adapt. This is a series of high powered virtual panel discussions where we unravel the success mantras for the new novel and try and look at what the roadmap should be for us in a post COVID world. I know, I know, post COVID world doesn't seem to be appearing anywhere in the immediate future. We're seeing the number of cases that are still rising. But it's good to spend this time trying to figure out what needs to be done for, for, for India and for the world as we finally emerge from COVID. Now, I'm Vikram Chandra. I'm the founder of Heritage. Today, we're going to be looking at the topic of policy and reforms. But on the impact of COVID, we have seen the, the Reserve Bank of India, for example, talking about perhaps a 4% you know, drop in GDP. It could be an 8% drop in GDP. Those are, those are scary numbers. When you're looking at the at the landscape out there, how bad is it looking to you? How bad do you think the numbers actually will be? Uh, this time, at the the COVID pandemic has led to already a fall in global decline of over six point five percent. So the world has actually seen a wiping out of about sixteen trillion of the global economy. Sixteen trillion of the glo global. This is the size and scale of the impact. On bank of the pandemic and therefore India is going to have an impact in a very big way there's no mincing word about it India will be impacted by this but what India has uh, done is by a series of reforms in the days to come and by a series of measures of both fiscal and monetary policy it is merely trying to ensure that it uh, companies and its MSMEs and its agriculture sector uh, stands, uh, you know, is in the days to come, is able to withstand this huge shock which both the world and India has seen. And that has been the attempt through both, uh, you know, the vast series of measures which the RBI took and this vast number of uh, reforms which the government announced through the Atma Nirbhar package. So, my, my personal view is. Uh, that uh, uh, we should this year will may be bad, but I think we should be able to bounce back next year on account of these measures. Mr. Deepak, I mean, I, I don't want to come to. We've heard lots of specific reforms, and I let's look at the reforms that are required in individual areas. But I want to come to you with a couple of overall points on which I am not completely sure that we've on answered the question on a fundamental change that India needs to make when it comes to ease of doing business. For 20 years, I went to Davos virtually every year. And every single person whom I used to meet to among CEOs used to say, what worries us about India is not the market or the laws or the possibility of making profits or any of that. What really worries us is the possibility of something happening that you can't plan for or prepare for, which is policy flip-flops, changes that will happen, retrospective tax that will come. Long-term stable policies which give certainty and predictability to investors is obviously something which investment is looking for. And one of the major areas which India needs is large volumes of investment. We're talking about the stock markets. Stock markets and F F FII inflows is basically hot money. You know, there's liquidity, regulators are putting in money, central banks are giving stimuli. So money is flowing in and wherever the yield is good, they are coming in, but it'll go off. We need to make sure that we get investment in the real economy, you know, the infrastructure, especially digital infrastructure in uh, areas like export, making our export sector competitive. And uh, these, these two areas, basically, which is, I believe, the low-hanging fruit. Now, unless we have forward-looking policies, and we've done a lot in ease, improving the ease of doing business, but it's not enough, you know, because other competitors, other countries are competitors, and people are catching up with us. Some are ahead of us. So we need to be in the race to give the best deal to the prospective investor. This is an area which involves also the state government. And we have seen in recent times how state governments have often reneged on their uh, commitment and their uh, responsibility towards national uh, projects or projects at least which are nationally important. We've seen that in the case of uh, the Plavaram uh, project. We've seen that in the case of the Amravati uh, capital uh, uh, region project and such like. All these, because you bring in an international company as your consultant, 
you bring in some international contractors and i mean i mentioned only two such projects but i could mention several more such as for instance uh, the project for uh, constructing an elevated highway from uh, madura vayal to uh, tamil chennai uh, port now suddenly because the government changes or some reason you renege and you change the terms of the contract uh, and scare away the contractor all these convey the wrong signals for which we need uh, we have something called state support agreements uh, but uh, those need to be relooked at to make them more strong and uh, definitive and these should be vetted by the cabinet by the union cabinet so if a state government tomorrow reneges on their commitment towards uh, these things then the central government can pick them up and it's uh, it's then a disobedience or a defiance of central statute in march 2020 the banking sector has now a very healthy provision ratio for example our bank has a provisioning ratio around 85% which is very healthy but unfortunately with the onset of the covid some of this could be set a little bit backward it's good that yesterday uh, there has been an announcement of the restructuring mechanism with defined sign post by the reserve bank of india and uh, with, with an incentivization that you need to restructure only those assets which are viable and not go after others so i think that's a very good suggestions and my sense is that banks currently are much well prepared to ride through the storm than they were in the earlier crisis so india's core um, advantage is availability of low cost skilled workforce i think three sectors that have really taking advantage of this and are already in the international market are software chemicals and uh, pharma so chemicals is a relatively a new entrant you know it is clearly building on the track record built by pharma sector and also the, by the fact that the most multinationals are now looking for a alternative to china as a sourcing base and i think we are taking advantage of that but you know coming to you know doing everything or focusing on domestic manufacturing for let's say electronics or consumer goods and building um, global hubs you know my interaction with the industry players suggest that i think there are even today quite a few hurdles uh, so if we can um, focus on manufacturing to take care of our requirements and reduce import dependency i think that is good enough for the time being no i don't want to understand that a little further but that's a that's a very interesting point that you made that they are sectors in which india could have a major advantage and done correctly this could be the next wave of driving india so just let me just take up on some of the things that you said yeah we all know about it and you know pharma that that's been there and done that the government seems to be hoping that we'll persuade taiwanese and other companies to move set up base out here because everyone wants to deal with coming from china so get them to come and set up a base out here and say okay make your phones out here make cars here make auto parts out here and export as you rightly said that there are still hurdles that they are that are there at the back of their minds perhaps if you could list some of those and some of the some of the specific things that you think perhaps we should that the, that that we can try and do to remove those hurdles no as i think some of the panelists have highlighted um, so we are seeing more people getting interested in india to set up manufacturing but they are still hesitant or kezi you know you know even if you see the labor reform that have been highlighted you know they are saying that this will be there for 3 years or 5 years you know you don't set up a manufacturing base invest 2 billion dollars and uh, don't know what will happen after 5 years